there's a total of seven Shardbearer demigod bosses in Elden Ring, named Shardbearers as they drop powerful great runes when defeated. When restored, equipped and activated, these great runes enable various passive abilities such as raising all your stats, restoring HP upon defeating enemies and dealing heal on hit, so definitely worth picking up. Unfortunately, the great runes you receive by defeating Shardbearer bosses have lost all their beneficial powers and will therefore need to be restored at one of five Divine Towers, depending on the Shardbearer defeated. As soon as you restore power to your first great rune, a new menu option will become available at all sites of grace, allowing you to browse through all your currently restored great runes to select one for equipping. However, only a single great rune can be equipped at any one time. What a bummer. Once a great rune has been restored at a divine tower, as well as equipped at a site of grace, it will then need to be activated using a rare tool item called a rune arc. A rune arc's main purpose is to activate the passive abilities of your restored and currently equipped great rune, otherwise its power remains dormant. So to recap, great runes need to be acquired by defeating Shardbearer bosses, restored at one of five divine towers, equipped at a site of grace, then activated using a rune arc, which loses power every time you die. What the fuck from soft? Therefore, if you wish to keep the bonuses of your equipped great rune active for the long term, a new rune arc will need to be used each and every time you die, which will probably be a lot. Additional rune arcs can be freely found in the environment during exploration, dropped by certain enemies, purchased from various vendors in limited quantity and can also be farmed. Your currently equipped great rune is displayed to the top left of the screen, just to the left of the HP, FP and stamina bars. If the equipped great rune is not currently powered by a rune arc, it will be dimly lit and therefore its passive ability remains inactive. If a rune arc is currently active, the great rune glows brightly indicating its powers are ready to kick some ass. This guide has been purposefully structured so all seven Shardbearer bosses are presented in order of difficulty, allowing you to pick them up as you naturally progress through the game. The first Shardbearer demigod boss is Godric the Grafted, who can be found inside the first legacy dungeon of the game, Stormvale Castle, and he's located near the secluded cell site of Grace. Godric is the last living member of the Golden Lineage and the ruler of Stormvale Castle. He's also an optional boss, as only two Shardbearers must be defeated to gain access to the mandatory legacy dungeon, Landale Royal Capital. It's recommended to be level 30 to 40 with a level 3 to 4 standard weapon or level 1 to 2 special weapon before tackling Stormvale. His great rune will raise all attributes by plus 5 when restored, equipped and activated. To restore power to Godric's great rune, you'll need to seek the Divine Tower of Limgrave. This tower stands beyond the Great Bridge, which itself can only be accessed from within Stormvale Castle. To get there from the Stormvale Main Gate, Site of Grace, follow the path shown here. The second Shardbearer boss is Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, who's found inside the second legacy dungeon of the game, the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, specifically at the Grand Library Site of Grace. The nearest Site of Grace before reaching the Grand Library would be the Debate Parlour, where you'll need to defeat a boss named the Red Wolf of Radagon. 
It's recommended to be level 50 to 60 with a level 4 to 6 standard weapon or level 2 to 3 special weapon before tackling the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. You can reach Renala by following this path from the debate parlor site of Grace. Being a powerful sorceress, Renala is the current head of the Karian royal family and is the only shardbearer who is not a demigod. She's also an optional boss as only two shardbearers must be defeated to gain access to Lanedale City. Her great rune is the only rune which does not need to be restored at a divine tower, equipped at a site of grace or activated with a rune arc. Its passive bonus is active and permanent from the point of acquirement and allows players to respec their character's attributes using a key item known as a larval tier. Larval tiers can be freely found in the environment during exploration, dropped by certain enemies as well as purchased from certain vendors in limited quantity. The third Shardbearer demigod boss is Starscourge Radan, who's heralded as one of the mightiest living demigods, having fought millennia to a standstill during the War of the Shattering. However, his resulting affliction with the Scarlet Rot caused him to be driven to insanity, crippling him and reducing him to a state of feral rage. Radan is an optional boss that can be found in the Wailing Dunes in the far east of Kaelid. However, these dunes can only be reached from within Redmain Castle, which is located at the very southern point of Kaelid, but only after activating the Radan Festival within the castle. There's two ways you can start this festival. The first is by progressing far enough through Rani's questline, who's found at Rani's Rise located behind Karia Manor. The second method is by activating any site of grace in the region of Altus Plateau, allowing you to skip Rani's questline altogether. It's recommended to be level 60 to 70 with a level 10 to 14 standard weapon or level 4 to 5 special weapon before venturing into Southern Kaelid. Once restored, equipped and activated, Radan's Great Rune increases HP, FP and Stamina by 15% and is superior to Godric's Great Rune once you've reached the soft caps for those stats. To restore power to Radan's Great Rune, you'll need to seek the Divine Tower of Kaelid, which is found a short distance northeast of the Dragon Barrow West site of Grace, as shown here. The fourth Shardbearer demigod boss is Rykard, Lord of Blasphemy, who's the true form of the god-devouring serpent whose body has been taken over by Rykard. This optional boss can be found at the third legacy dungeon of the game, Volcano Manor, which is located in Mount Gelmir to the west of Altus Plateau. It's recommended to be level 80 to 100 with a level 15 to 20 standard weapon or level 6 to 8 special weapon before tackling Volcano Manor. 
To gain access to the Rikard boss fight, you normally have to progress the lengthy Volcano Manor questline to conclusion. However, there's a much quicker route available from the start. You'll first need to speak with the owner of the house, Tanith, and agree to join the Volcano Manor Covenant. She'll then give you the drawing room key, allowing you to open several doors down the nearby hallway. The door you're interested in is the first on the right, which has an illusory wall with a picture hanging in the northern corner. Simply roll into this wall to reveal the illusion, opening a complex route to reach the Rikard boss battle by following the path shown here. Once restored, equipped and activated, Rikard's Great Rune will restore 80 HP plus 7% of maximum HP each and every time an enemy is defeated. For general exploration, this rune can be a real game changer. However, for major boss fights, it's practically useless. To restore power to Rikard's Great Rune, you'll need to seek the Divine Tower of West Altus, which is located at the southern point of the Altus Plateau. To get there, you'll first need to travel through the sealed tunnel mining system by following this path from the Outer Wall Phantom Tree Site of Grace.
The fifth shard bearer, demigod Boss, is Morgoth the Omen King, the true identity of Margit the Fell Omen, and can be found deep within the Lanedale Royal Capital near the Queen's Bedchamber, Site of Grace. Morgoth is a mandatory boss, and defeating him is required to advance the main story, to enter the mountaintops of the giants where the Forge of the Giants is located. It's recommended to be level 90 to 110 with a level 15 to 20 standard weapon or level 6 to 8 special weapon before entering the Landell City. As a reminder, any two Shardbearer bosses must be first defeated before access to the capital city is granted. Once you gain entry, you can reach Morgoth by following this path from the East Capital Rampart site of Grace. Once restored, equipped and activated, Morgoth's Great Rune will increase maximum HP by 25%, and the multiplier is calculated after all other buffs, equipment and spells have been applied. To restore power to Morgoth's Great Rune, you'll need to seek the Divine Tower of East Altus, which is located to the southeast of Landale Royal Capital. You can reach this tower by following this path from the East Capital Rampart site of Grace.
sixth Shardbearer demigod boss is Moog, Lord of Blood, who's an optional boss that can be found at Moogwin Palace. The first thing to note is that Moog's Great Rune is the only rune exclusively used for multiplayer, unlike all the other runes which are strictly single player only. Moog's Great Rune will allow players to cast the Blessing of Blood Healing and Damage buff to allied non-player characters including Spirit Summon Ashes during multiplayer sessions. Moog is an extremely powerful Omen demigod, and unlike his twin brother Morgoth, Moog fully embraced his accursed Omen blood and was able to use it to wield powerful blood flame magic. Moguin Palace is a late game area located on the eastern landmass of the underground region Siofra River. It's recommended to be level 110 to 140 with a level 20 to 24 standard weapon or level 8 to 9 special weapon before exploring Moguin Palace. There's two methods to reach Moguin Palace. The first is by using the Pure Blood Knight's medal given to you by White Mask Veray at the end of his questline. Alternatively, you can travel to Moguin Palace by a hidden gateway teleporter, found on the western edge of the Consecrated Snowfield. The Consecrated Snowfield is a secret region on the lower plains of the mountaintops of the Giants, and can only be accessed by acquiring both halves of the Halig Tree Secret Medallion. This medallion will then grant access to the alternate location at the Grand Lift of Roll, the hidden path to the Halig Tree, which will take you directly to the Consecrated Snowfield. The Gateway Teleporter which takes you to Moguin Palace can be found to the west of the inner Consecrated Snowfield Site of Grace. Initially, the portal is dormant and will only activate after defeating the nearby Sanguine Noble NPC Invader. To restore power to Moog's Great Rune, just like his twin brother Morgoth, you'll need to seek the Divine Tower of East Altus. I've already shown how to reach this tower for Morgoth's Great Rune, so feel free to skip back to that timestamp if you need a reminder. The final 7th Shardbearer Demigod boss is Melenia, Blade of Mikella, who was born as a twin to her brother Mikella, and is an optional boss that can be found deep within the late game legacy dungeon Mikella's Halig Tree. This secret dungeon is found at the very northern tip of the entire Lands Between, and can only be accessed by solving the Everjail puzzle at Ordina Liturgical Town, which is found at the northern end of the Consecrated Snowfield. Successfully solving this puzzle will activate a dormant gateway teleporter within the town, which takes you directly to the Halig Tree Legacy Dungeon. To reach El Fael, Brace of the Halig Tree, which is a huge castle and the second part of the Halig Tree Dungeon, where Millennia resides, you first need to defeat Loretta, Knight of the Halig Tree, who's a boss that can be found at the Halig Tree Promenade Site of Grace. After defeating Loretta and activating the Promenade Grace, follow the path shown here to reach Millennia.
Once restored, equipped and activated, Millennia's Great Rune will grant a heal on hit buff for a 5 second window, every time you take damage from enemies. During this 5 second window, damage dealt to enemies will gradually restore HP up to the amount before you last took damage. As a drawback, the healing flask of Crimson Tears is reduced to 70% of its normal HP recovery, while Millennia's Great Rune is activated with a rune arc. To restore power to Millennia's Great Rune, you need to seek the isolated Divine Tower, which as its name suggests, is isolated in the middle of the sea. The only way to reach this tower is via a gateway teleporter, near the Divine Bridge Site of Grace, which is located within Landell City. However, depending on how far you've progressed in the main story will determine which path you need to follow to reach the Divine Bridge, and therefore the Isolated Tower. If the Landell Royal Capital is still intact and has not yet collapsed into ruin becoming the Ashen Capital, then you can reach the Isolated Tower by following this path from the East Capital Rampart Site of Grace. If the Landell City has already fallen into ruin and is now the Ashen Capital, you'll then need to travel all the way back to the Weeping Peninsula, located at the southern end of the Land Between. To the southwest of Weeping Peninsula, you'll find a crumbling stone structure called the Tower of Return. Climbing to the very top of this tower, you'll find a transporter trap disguised as a chest. Interacting with this trap will teleport you directly to the Divine Bridge in Landell City, and you can then proceed as normal through the nearby Gateway Teleporter to reach the Isolated Tower. As a side note, the Gateway Teleporter on the Divine Bridge remains dormant unless you first activate the large nearby lift from the Landell City side down below, or Landell City has already burned down into ashes becoming the Ashen Capital, therefore rendering the lift inaccessible. If you're having trouble taking down the toughest bosses in Elden Ring, then I highly recommend watching the video you can see on screen now, which will make all bosses far easier to take down.